Hey everyone, I'm Nico from Licks of the Beast and in this video we're gonna take a look back at 30 years of Fear of the Dark. This is a video I should have made six months ago, as the album originally came out in May of 1992. What happened was I did a retrospective for the Number of the Beast's 40th anniversary in March and I didn't want to release another similar video so soon after. Then other stuff got in the way as it often does. However, I didn't want to celebrate the 30th anniversary of this album while we were still in 2022. So we're cutting it close, but here we are. This was the band's second album with Yannick Gers, and it was their longest and most experimental sounding of their career up until that point. The sound was definitely more polished than its predecessor No Prayer for the Dying, as were the performances of all five members of the band. Maiden really branched out on this album. Be Quick or Be Dead is almost thrash metal heavy, Fear is the Key has a deep purple, perfect strangers kind of vibe, Wasting Love is practically a rock ballad, and you also had some really experimental songs like Weekend Warrior and The Apparition that I don't even know how to categorize. This was at least in part due to Yannick's fresh creative energy as he contributed to five of the album's 12 songs. I was still a teenager in 1992 and I have so many great memories from this album release. Like going to the local record store to pick up the Be Quick or Be Dead single before the album came out. I still have it, this is it right here. The cover was just awesome. The band looked pretty badass in the photo, especially Yannick and Bruce, look at them. And when I got home and dropped the needle for the first time, my throat and stomach got so tight I couldn't even swallow. It was a feeling I will never forget. I got to meet Dave and Yannick at the local rock radio station in Montreal when they were in town to promote the new album. They were in for an interview and a few of us went there to hang out and chit chat. Now unfortunately, neither me nor my two cousins who came with me remembered to bring a camera, so I don't have any pictures from that day. But I do remember both Yannick and Dave being so laid back and friendly and really generous with their time, so that was a fantastic day and a wonderful memory. Seeing them live for the second time was a really exciting experience for me because I felt like I had already been initiated into this world. And also because this tour featured a little more elaborate stage and light show and the band were working so well together. I also remember listening to the album multiple times every day. I first got it on cassette and I would listen to it on my way to school and back. Plus I'd listen to it at home and I would spend hours trying to learn all of the guitar parts by ear. I spent so much time with this album that I have so many different images, sounds, smells, places and people attached to the songs. And this is something about being a fan of music at that point in time that was extraordinarily special. So for this video I want to take you through the album track by track and look at what I think is particularly interesting about each of these songs. This is not a review or a critique of the album. I'm not gonna nitpick or judge the band's musical choices, as this is a celebratory video, and I wanna focus on what I think makes the album special. So let's get into it right away, starting with the opener, Be Quick or Be Dead. Unlike the openers of the previous four albums that featured more elaborate intros, this one starts off fast and heavy. It's the first song on a Maiden album co-written by Yannick, and it's got some cool twists. It's in the key of G minor. The picking rhythm of the verses and pre-choruses is really interesting, where you get this driving, syncopated feel. <laughs> And the chorus arrangement is really neat as the drums lay back on the first half and then they return to a driving rhythm on the second half. And I have to mention that Yannick and Dave's solos are absolutely smoking on this song. From Here to Eternity is a straightforward rock song with a very ACDC-esque intro. So it starts with a pizzicato rhythm figure in D-Mixolydian, 
and is a little reminiscent of For Those About to Rock, We Salute You. And then they do it again, but with a borrowed flat six chord from the Aeolian mode to keep it interesting. And Dave plays a very neat minor pentatonic lick over that, which is a very bluesy thing to do, and it works exceptionally well here. Afraid to Shoot Strangers is next. Now this is one of the album's highlights, written about the first Gulf War from the point of view of a soldier questioning what they are about to do on the battlefield, the horrors to come, and pondering the futility of it all. This is embodied in the music in a very powerful way, starting with the heartbreaking intro in E major, with some borrowed notes from the parallel key of E minor for a very dynamic and emotional melody. This part sounds so cinematic, it could easily be the opening theme of a war movie. And there are so many beautiful melodies in this song, but I want to look at the one that comes after Dave's solo. This one is in the same vein as the other two main melodies, with the Aeolian minor sixth giving it an additional hint of sadness and melancholy following the chaos of the solo section. <laughs> Next is Fear is the Key. This is a very Deep Purple-esque mid-tempo rocker and a very unusual song for Iron Maiden. The Phrygian dominant riff brings me back to Power Slave, but with a much different rhythm and pace. This riff's groove is a little laid back and more deliberate. <laughs> There's a really unique part in the middle section. So you have acoustic guitars playing root third dyads with open strings for extra body. And the electric guitars and bass are playing just the root notes in a rhythmic pattern that is a gallop and a reverse gallop together. So you have the gallop and the reverse gallop. It's a very intense breakdown, especially with Bruce's crazy screams. And I love how they get out of that part to go into Yannick's solo. And Yannick's solo is just oozing with coolness and just enough of a Blackmore influence to remind you of Yann's pedigree and lineage as a guitar player. That's so cool. Lyrically, this is a very bleak song, but musically, it's quite majestic and some parts are a bit like a movie score, like the intro riff with the two guitars playing the same melody an octave apart. Yannick has a really great, very intense solo, after which the band plays a second interlude with a melody that is played first in unison by both guitars and 
then a synth pad kicks in and one guitar plays a harmony, mostly a third higher. <laughs> The combination of the synth pad and harmony guitar line really makes this part stand out and sound particularly otherworldly. The album's third single, and also the band's first and only rock ballad. While many rock ballads of the 80s and early 90s would feature a guitar solo in the intro, Maiden opted to go with a beautiful melody harmonized in thirds. We'll look at that in a future video about harmonies, but for this video, I want to talk about the lush and dreamy chord voicings used in the verses. The main verse figure alternates between an E minor 9 and what could be considered a C sus2 sharp 11. The dissonant intervals in these chords give them a richness that is truly pleasing to the ear and at the same time a tension that makes the chorus so satisfying as they move to straight power chords. The verse also includes a brief change to A with the equally lush voicings of A minor 7th and D sus4 over A. Did you know that 48% of you watching this video right now are not subscribed to Licks of the Beast? If you're enjoying what I do here, subscribing is the easiest way that you can support the channel and it keeps you up to date so that you'll never miss a new video. Okay, now let's get back to Fear of the Dark. Both because of its structure and placement on the album, The Fugitive is a bit reminiscent of The Assassin from No Prayer for the Dying. The interesting thing about this song is the first verse where three of the four chords are played as sus2 chords. It's a little unusual, but the sound is very serene and picturesque, which is exactly in line with the lyrics at this point in the song. So the chord sequence is D sus2, C sus2, A minor, B flat sus2, and C sus2. And it's really impressive how the song changes keys so seamlessly from E minor to A minor, back to E minor, and then to D minor. All this in just the first minute. I love the main riff of this song. It's got a great groove in 12-8 time, and that gives it a very particular bounce. So they're in the key of E minor, but they add a C sharp from E major as a way to insert some color and a sense of movement. <laughs> This is a very unique song. For one thing, there's no chorus, no pre-chorus or bridge in the entire song. It's just two continuous verses separated by an instrumental section that consists of an interlude, two guitar solos, and a breakdown. And the verses themselves are made up of two parts. One with the chords E, C over E, and D, and the other with the chords A, G, D, and C. Another unique thing about this song is Yannick uses a wah pedal in his solos, and it sounds phenomenal. Judas Be My Guide is a great Dave Murray song with a fantastic title, and no less than three awesome solos in this track that spans just barely over three minutes. The intro is incredibly powerful, and you can tell just from the way the song starts that it's going to be really good. <laughs> All 
three solos showcase Dave's seemingly innate melodic sense, thanks to some crafty phrasing and interesting use of intervals. In the intro solo, for example, Dave lands on an A over a C power chord, which is a sixth. Then he bends a G to an A on the higher octave over a B flat power chord, a major seventh, and then back down to a G over the C power chord, which is a perfect fifth. Landing on these different intervals gives the solo a sense of movement and it keeps the listener's ear engaged. Along with Fear is the Key, this is the most unmaiden song of the album. So it starts off with an almost rock ballad acoustic guitar riff that wouldn't sound out of place on a Bon Jovi album. Then we go to the verse rhythm, which is a little reminiscent of ACDC's Highway to Hell. And the chorus is almost like a heavier version of a John Mellencamp chorus, with its singable bounce. Comparisons aside though, the point is that the band was starting to really venture past their own boundaries into previously unknown musical territory. So I really have to give them credit for trying new and different approaches to songwriting on this album. And how beautiful and dreamy is this interlude melody. The title track and closer of the album would go on to become a live favorite for the next three decades. This was their Hallowed Be Thy Name for the 90s. A more elaborate slow intro, a simpler and more direct main riff, and an actual chorus with a bouncy rhythm and a very singable melody. The bridge that comes after Yannick and Dave's short but very memorable solos features a very interesting guitar melody based on two bars of the D minor chord, two bars of the C major chord, one bar of G minor, and one bar of A minor. So the pattern on the first three chords is one, five, three, four. And on the last chord, it becomes one, six, five, four. So that it ends on the E that wants to resolve naturally back to the tonic D. Had they kept the same pattern throughout, the riff would have ended on D and thus would have felt flat with nowhere to go from there. It's small details like these that make all the difference in songwriting. And by this point in their career, Iron Maiden had become exceptionally good at this kind of thing. So that's it for this video. I really hope you all enjoyed this 30 year retrospective of Fear of the Dark. And I'd love to hear about your favorite moments on this album and if you have any special memories tied to it. As always, thank you all so much for watching and stay tuned for more licks of the beast.